Hi, and welcome to the Immigrant Legal Resource Center's Immigration Policy Update on the topic of Provisional Unlawful Presence Waiver. Today is February 4th, 2013, and your presenters will be Lourdes Martinez, the Immigrant Legal Resource Center staff attorney, and Aaron Quinn, another star staff attorney here at ILRC. On January 3rd of this year, the Department of Homeland Security published the final rule establishing a process for the Provisional Unlawful Presence Waiver on Form I-601A. The process will be in effect as of March 4th, 2013. So what is the I-601A Provisional Unlawful Presence Waiver for? It is to waive the unlawful presence bars that are triggered when an individual leaves the U.S. to apply for an immigrant visa at a U.S. consulate in their country of origin. This waiver will weigh in admissibility based on the unlawful presence bars listed at this subsection of the Immigration and Nationality Act. So note that that subsection makes reference to the three-year bar and the ten-year bar for unlawful presence, but it does not it's not the subsection of the INA where you find the language for the so-called permanent bar. So this unlawful presence waiver does not waive the permanent bar for unlawful re-entry to the U.S. after unlawful presence or deportation. So let's go over these unlawful presence bars that the new waiver is designed to address. Many relatives of U.S. citizens and residents who are eligible for a family-based immigrant visa but who cannot apply for permanent residence from inside the United States must go through consular processing abroad instead. These individuals must therefore leave the United States in order to apply for an immigrant visa at a U.S. embassy or consulate abroad. If they have accumulated six months or more of unlawful presence while in the United States, upon leaving the United States, for example, to go through consular processing, they will trigger a three-year reentry bar. Um, this is an inadmissibility bar that will subject them to three years of not being able to return to the United States. If they've been outside the United, or if they've been unlawfully present in the United States for one year or more, then the reentry bar is 10 years. It used to be that once that person left the United States to go through consular processing, they would need to file a waiver from abroad, and they could not file it until after the consular interview. That was because the need for the waiver mentioned a minute ago, uh, is not triggered until one has left the United States. And this new waiver is now changed that. So let's just think about that for a minute and address how this new I-601A provisional waiver is different from the process we already had for filing an I-601 waiver, um, the process that was already in existence. The first big difference is that this waiver process of filing a waiver before leaving the United States is only available for immediate relatives of United States citizens. So those that are able to file a family petition based on a permanent resident family member won't be able to use this process. If they need an unlawful presence waiver, they'll still need to use the traditional filing of an I-601 ap after attending a consular interview. Also, it only applies for inadmissibility of unlawful presence. So there are many other reasons why somebody might need a waiver to consular process. They might have made a misrepresentation in their past. They might have um, a criminal incident. They might have a prior deportation. All of these things may have waivers available to allow a person to consular process, but they will not be able to use the provisional I-601 waiver to do so. It is only for unlawful presence. And the main way that this is different is, just as we've highlighted, this allows somebody to apply for an unlawful presence waiver before they've left the United States and triggered the need for the waiver. This is why it's called provisional. It's allowing somebody to stay in the United States 
waiting for this waiver to be adjudicated so that USCIS can decide yes or no before the person takes the risk of leaving the United States, separating themselves from their family, and potentially getting barred from re-entering if a waiver was denied after the consular interview. What's really important here is that both waiver processes are still available. So for the, the limited group of people that qualify to file an I-601A provisional waiver here in the United States, they can do so. But for all other, the others, the traditional I-601 filing is still available. So that will apply to those that have other grounds of inadmissibility that they need to waive. For those not consular processing and actually filing an I-601 in conjunction with an adjustment of status here in the United States, either with USCIS or an immigration court. Uh, and additionally, anyone that might be eligible for any waivers of inadmissibility could still use the I-601 or other waiver forms and go through the traditional channels that have already been established. So both processes are still alive and well. So now let's go over the eligibility requirements for the Provisional Unlawful Presence Waiver on Form I-601A. A person is eligible to apply for this waiver, waiver if he or she is physically present in the United States at the time of filing the waiver application, is at least 17 years old, is the beneficiary of an approved immigrant visa petition classifying the applicant as the immediate relative of a United States citizen, is not inadmissible under any other section of the Immigration and Nationality Act other than the section regarding reentry bars, um, specifically the three-year and the ten-year bars, if he or she already has an immigrant visa application pending with the Department of State, and they have paid the immigrant visa processing fee. And we'll talk more about the process in a minute here. Only applicants scheduled by the National Visa Center on or after January 3rd of this year for an upcoming initial immigrant visa interview are eligible to apply for the I-601A. So what this means is the date on which the National Visa Center took the action to schedule the interview and not the date of the interview appointment. In addition, the applicant for the waiver must show extreme hardship to his or her U.S. citizen spouse or parent. Only U.S. citizen spouse or parent um, will qualify the applicant for the waiver um, in regards to the extreme hardship element. And if the alien is in removal proceedings, proceedings must be administratively closed and must not be recalendered before the time of filing the waiver application. So let's look at this a different way. Um, let's think about who's not going to be eligible for this provisional waiver process. Uh, first of all, like we said, anyone who's inadmissible for any other reason at all besides the three-year and ten-year box for unlawful presence. So additionally, someone who already has an adjustment of status application pending here in the United States will not be able to use a provisional and lawful, lawful presence waiver process. Also, anyone who had already been set for a consular interview prior to January 3rd, 2013, are not going to be able to use the I-601A. So if somebody was already in process before this, uh, this new provision came out, uh, and already had their scheduling sent from the National Visa Center to the consulate, they will not be able to use the I-601A waiver. They're going to have to use the tr traditional method of applying after their consular interview. Um, additionally, generally speaking, those in removal will not be able to use this process unless the proceedings have been administratively closed and not recalendered. And so anyone additionally who is subject to a final order of removal or a final order of exclusion or de deportation is not going to be able to use this provisional waiver. And likewise, those that are subject to reinstatement of a prior removal order cannot use an I-601A provisional waiver. 
Now we will go over the application process to file this waiver. Once the I-130 petition for alien relative is approved by the CIS and the applicant is ready to proceed with consular processing, the applicant must pay the immigrant visa application fees to the National Visa Center and must notify the National Visa Center before applying for the Provisional Unlawful Presence Waiver. That is the email address where uh, applicants will need to contact the National Visa Center. And you can also follow the instructions at the Department of State's website um, shown there. While the applicant is still in the United States, the USCIS will adjudicate the Provisional Unlawful Presence Waiver on Form I-601A. And um, so the application is filed with USCIS after notifying NBC with a fee for $585 plus a biometric fee of $85. And there is no fee waiver for this application. So that fee will have to be paid. The applicant will need to submit biometrics at an application support center in the United States. And there is no interview as a standard rule for this process at the moment, but there may be exceptions. Once the National Visa Center um, receives notice that the I-601A waiver has been adjudicated, it will schedule the immigrant visa a consulate or embassy abroad. And only then will the applicant need to leave the United States for consular processing at a consular office abroad. A warning here, if the consular officer determines at the immigrant visa interview that the applicant is inadmissible for other reasons or is otherwise ineligible for the immigrant visa, the I-601A provisional waiver will automatically be revoked. There is no appeal process if this waiver is denied, either by USCIS or later by the consular officer. So um, the applicant can apply appeal excuse me, uh, denial. But the applicant can do one of two things. If the USCIS denies the I-601A waiver, or if the applicant withdraws it before it is adjudicated, the applicant can either file a new I-601A waiver, which will require payment of the fee again, and um, the applicant will need to submit any additional evidence believed to establish eligibility at this point. This is only possible if the immigrant visa case is still pending with the Department of State. So the applicant needs to notify the Department of State of the intent to file an entirely new I-601A waiver. Alternatively, the other thing that applicant can do is to file the old form I-601 waiver with the USCIS logbox after attending their immigrant visa interview and um, after the consular officer determines there's another ground of inadmissibility or something. So what is the risk if the I-601A waiver is denied? Some people are wondering if they're applying here in the United States and the waiver is denied, will they be put in removal proceedings? So the risk is low for individuals whose only ground of inadmissibility is the unlawful presence. For example, those whose I-601A waiver is denied because they fail to meet the hardship element. Those people are not inadmissible on other grounds, and it is um, not likely that they would be placed in removal proceedings. The USCIS will continue to follow their current notice to appear policy to decide whether or not to refer a particular individual to ICE for removal proceedings. And so following that um, guidance, the risk is higher for those whose I-601A waiver is denied because they have an additional ground of inadmissibility, especially those related to criminal, uh, criminal record or an immigration violation such as unlawful entries, fraud, or misrepresentation. Now let's just take a minute to talk about these applicants that are eligible to apply while they're in immigration proceedings. So first of all, this process was set out such that USCIS 
uh, is the only agency with jurisdiction over the provisional waiver for unlawful presence. So immigration judges do not have the jurisdiction to adjudicate a provisional unlawful presence waiver. However, even if you're in removal proceedings, they have carved out an exception to allow those in removal proceedings that might be able to benefit in consular process to apply. What needs to happen is that the parties need to agree to administratively close the proceedings, and once those proceedings are closed, the person can then file for the provisional waiver. The question then is, what does one do once that waiver is granted? If the applicant gets an I-601 provisional waiver granted while their proceedings are administratively closed, unless further guidance is issued, they must take very cautious steps to make sure that upon leaving the United States to consular process, they do not self-deport. An administratively closed proceeding is distinct from one that has been terminated or no longer pending. Therefore, once uh, this waiver is granted, the applicant should come back and recalendar their proceedings before the immigration judge and ask the court to terminate their case. Once the case is terminated, they can travel freely to complete the consular process without any deportation order or risk of self-deporting. The other option possible is a grant of voluntary departure. This would also allow the applicant to then leave the United States to consular process. Advocates hope that the process will unfold such that judges for uh, the immigration courts will terminate proceedings for those granted the uh, provisional waiver and allow them to consular process, uh, but that is yet to be seen. The most important part for the applicant, though, is to make sure to take steps back with the court before leaving the United States. Applicants may wonder whether obtaining a provisional unlawful person's waiver grants them any other benefits, and it's important to remind them that it does not. This waiver is for the purpose of um, being able to apply for an immigrant visa abroad, waiving any unlawful presence uh, in admissibility ground that may have been triggered when they leave the United States but it does not confer any legal status while they're in the United States. It doesn't even protect them against accumulating any more unlawful presence. So, so long as they remain in the U.S., even with an approved waiver, they are continuing to accrue unlawful presence. Of course, they will not be able to work or travel lawfully with this waiver, and it does not protect them from being placed in removal proceedings or from being removed from the United States. The waiver is automatically revoked, as we said earlier, if the immigrant visa is denied at the consular interview. But there are also other reasons why the waiver might be revoked, such as if the I-130 petition associated with the I-601A waiver is revoked, withdrawn, or rendered invalid, unless it is later reinstated for humanitarian reasons or converted to a widow or widower petition. The waiver will also be revoked if there is an entry without inspection into the United States at any time before approval of the I-601A waiver or after approval but before an immigrant visa is issued. If the waiver is denied, it cannot be appealed and therefore the person can uh, only refile it, paying the fees again as we said earlier, or if there's a whole new process for example, a new I-130 filed um, later on, the I-601A waiver can be filed again, or the applicant could file the regular old I-601 waiver. There will be many people who will still need to use the regular I-601 waiver because, for example, if uh, hardship is to a lawful permanent resident and they cannot use a new waiver, or if there's other grounds of inadmissibility to be waived other than unlawful presence. If they've already left the United States for consular processing, their, their interview was scheduled prior to January 3rd of this year, or if the petitioner is an LPR and therefore the applicant is not an immediate relative. Thank you very much for listening to this policy update. For um, more information on the Provisional Unlawful Presence Waiver, please check the USCIS website or the State Department's website at the links shown on the screen. Thank you.